So, one year ago today, Palace was placed on the Wavex Impossible Levels list, and it has remained at number one for the entirety of its duration on said list. It's actually placed at number three, but was moved to number one when all the stuff above it was removed because of some, like, wacky gameplay shenanigans that the website outlawed, but the actual Google Doc doesn't. But, eh, it, it, it's fine. I, I digress. So today, I'm going to be going through and giving some behind-the-scenes information and just my general experience with making this, because it was my first big impossible level. As you can probably tell, this is going to be mostly unscripted. I have some notes about the things that I want to mention, but other than that, I just hope that I don't say something really weird. All right, uh, oh my goodness, 1.99, that was an interesting place to pause it. So, uh, this pinwheel effect that you see in the background right now was the very last thing to be added to the version that I originally submitted to the list. Uh, V5, which is the showcase that I'm watching, does have some stuff in the latter parts that I added just to, like, spruce up the decoration after I'd gotten better at it, which, now looking at it again, I don't think it looks all that good. I think it looks better than V3 or V4 or whatever I submitted to the original list, but it could still use some improvements, so V6 may be coming eventually, but I'll get on to that a bit later. Why is my cat going to attempt to eat my chair again? Uh, but yeah, the last thing that I added to the first submitted version of this was the pinwheel in the background, right now. Okay, uh, that transition, I have no idea why, but sometimes it just wouldn't work. And I still don't know why to this day. The leading theory is that I was just dropping frames when I was going through it or something, because my old computer wasn't especially good, and it just made these three double spikes unaligned. Okay, so these four... Uh, oh my goodness, my cat is eating my chair. Please don't eat my chair, cat. What are you doing? So these four black orb red pad combos sort of taught me that frame rate, like the timing that you could click was more important than the physics. Because the first one of these, you'd go up like uh, eight or nine pixels and then you'd click the black orb and go back down. So I pushed the uh, invisible spikes above them to eight or nine pixels above. But then the second one, you went up 10 or 11 pixels, so that didn't work. And I was just, like, thinking, oh no, this is really weird. Why is this just not happening? I guess I just did something wrong here. But no, this was just a normal thing with FPS, because they aligned differently, it went up an inconsistent amount of pixels. And this was the thing that finally sort of got in my head that the uh, differing physics of FPS wasn't as important as the altered, like, spans that you could click in. Okay, so the hitboxes for uh, these two dash herbs are four little spike slope things, and uh, I did not really like botting this part because back a year ago, Show Trajectory wasn't all that developed of a program, so I had to kind of just hope that there wasn't too much sliding when going around with these things. Especially when it came to the rotated hitbox on Show Trajectory, because I guess the spike slopes use the rotated red hitbox for some reason, I don't know. I guess they're rotated, maybe. But yeah, uh, this part, plus Show Trajectory, one year ago, wasn't all that fun to bot. Okay, so for this straight fly, I was really worried that this would be above 15 CPS. Now I know that this is definitely not close to 15 CPS. I mean, I think when I was botting it, it maxed out at like 12, but that's just because I was clicking way more than you needed to. But, uh, yeah, I think you can probably... Yeah, I think I see right now that these aren't plus sevens, even though plus seven was possible, I just didn't think it would be below 15 CPS, so I nerfed them. So yeah, Palace has been nerfed, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, now we're onto the wave, which I'm going to be skipping by a lot of this because it's really long and really boring. Because, you know, 
like in terms of impossible gameplay, you had like the Max FS style where it was just a cube that did stuff and then the wave where all the difficulty was. And I really didn't really know how to, really didn't know really how to deviate from that. I am so good at talking. I am so incredibly good at talking. So yeah, I actually need to scroll backwards a bit. Oops. Uh, there are no invisible objects in this wave part. I mean, there probably are some invisible objects, but none that affect the gameplay. These are on-grid default spike slopes. There are not any invisible spike walls, and there are not any invisible macro walls. Also, there are blue orbs, so you can hold into them, so they aren't swifts. So the palace wave has the potential to be buffed really, really, really hard. Like... This is already one of the hardest things on the list. I don't think it's the hardest wave part. I would say that the Wavex Joy wave is harder than the Palace wave just because it's so much longer and like actually has more diverse gameplay and uses dual desync, which is so fun and all that stuff. But I would still say that Palace is more difficult because of the ball part, which I'll get into uh, when I get to there. But yeah, uh, if there is ever a Palace buff date, just know that this wave will be getting way, way, way harder because it is, like, not even close to the ceiling of wave gameplay. Okay, uh, one more pausing. There are some ground spikes that are inside, uh, the outer layer of ground spikes. There are only spikes and glow. This is not filled in at all, and I thought that this part was really empty. If you take- actually, no, you can't take a look at the old V3 or V4 showcase because I think it's unlisted now or whatever. Uh, this was originally just the outer layer of ground spikes. So for V3, I went back and added in a bit more deco, which I, I still don't think makes up for the complete lack of everything. I will refer to this part as the neon part just because it's kind of like black and glow, which was all I really did back in the day. Okay, uh, another pause right here. This is an example of why, I mean, technically there's deco here, but it doesn't look the best. I think the glow on the metal blocks is way too strong now. And I also think it could be useful to make it more like fading, I guess, where it starts out very small, but very bright, and then like extends down using the saturation slider and whatnot. Also, uh, this is not filled in at all. You can see with the blue orbs along the bottom, there is just the spike slope and then the metal slopes. There is nothing filled in here except for like the dual at the bottom. Also, uh, some of these have gravity portals, some of them have two, some of them have one, because botting this on 400 or 600 FPS, they just didn't align sometimes, where I'd try and hold into one, but I'd go up too high, try and not hold up into one, and then I would still like, end up hitting the wall, if that made any sense whatsoever. I'm not sure if it did. So yeah, I had to remove. Originally, I removed all of them on the going up slopes, and then that still didn't work. So you can see off on the, uh, I think both the left and right side, that there's only one portal in them. All right, uh, UFO. I mean, the icon isn't that good of a spot, but this is the part that I'd say the redeco was the kindest to because I added in a bunch more of the ground spikes and I added a bunch of uh, the animated objects. So I, I'd say that this part was tuned up pretty well. The gameplay on the other hand was really whack when I was botting it because like I said with the uh, black orb and red pad things, I wasn't really aware of how like the FPS was in terms of the actual positions that you could click. I was just thinking of the physics. Also, uh, this is a duel. There's a wave down at the bottom. It used to have all of the one by one spike slopes, but that was above CPS, which was a consistent theme when I was making this. Like, yeah, that little, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Like the two blue pads over there. I don't know. Those like sometimes just didn't align properly. So I had to move the jumps over. There's this blue portal that you use like with the, with the black orb that also didn't work. And then the jumps afterward didn't align properly because you just didn't fall down fast enough. So they were like moved around, around the uh, actual spots that I jumped. So yeah, this UFO part was rather scuffed when it, when, when it comes right down to it. Okay, that, that's probably good space to uh, stop it. 
I would consider the ball part to be the second hardest part of this level, maybe even the first. There are the dash morbs, and then there are a bunch of the red pad, black orb combos. You can also see over on the right side that there is a space where there is uh, one of these missing, because I had to bot this, I think it was a total of eight times. Four or five of them ended in a position where I just couldn't get back onto the main line of the gameplay, so I had to restart and fix it. I couldn't just use Noclip. And then I had to actually bot it three or four times because it was above CPS and I needed to make sure that it wasn't. So that middle orb was removed to make sure that it was under CPS. Okay, that's probably another good place to stop it. Uh, yeah, this wave, comparing this wave gameplay to the wave gameplay that I made, no, not, not there, like here, this, this, this wave gameplay is so much more boring compared to this, this wave gameplay. Also, uh, there are some size changes in here, which were really annoying to try and deal with, because I would go and hit it, and oh no, I'm hitting it too soon, so I move it back a block, or not, not a block, a mini space, and then I go to the next one, and I'm still dying. So I move it back another time, but that doesn't work because I actually had to move it forward because it's an original, because isn't, oh goodness, I'm just saying stuff still, ah, because in its original position, it worked. And then another one of them would have had to been moved two over, which was really annoying until I found out that I could just use the teleportals to fix a lot of it. Okay, so this is one of the parts that, uh, wait. So yeah, this was one of the parts that I had to restart from the beginning because it didn't work. Originally, there wasn't anything to push you down in the ship, so you just get yeeted up into that slope up there with no way to get back onto the normal gameplay path. And then the second time that I bought to this point, the slope prevented me from getting high enough because I just hit the slope, so I wasn't able to get through the uh, straight fly gap. So I had to put a toggle uh, trigger down, which, oh goodness, there was a lot more shenanigans to do with this duel as well, beyond just the transition into it, which you can see I, I eh, oh my goodness, you can see I held into it with the wave just because that was a bit easier because, you know, sometimes you just miss the portal otherwise. Uh, a, a good a place as any to pause it. This duel was the hardest thing I have ever botted, ever. And I think it will continue to be like that. So having to deal with this, which is risky fling after risky fling. There's like a one or two frame gap on 400 that you can fling through all of these. So I had to fly through one of them and then let go soon enough that I could get the fling through the other one. So it was alignment after alignment after alignment. And I like didn't want to put it above CPS, so I didn't just like go backwards using time travel or whatever to like if I was holding with the wave, then I couldn't place a checkpoint. Overall, nothing has come close to this in terms of botting difficulty. I've gone through the entirety of last theory and neither of those were as hard as this duel right here. Fun fact, this took me 40 minutes to bot the first time. Yeah, uh, all of this maze is filler. Originally, just uh, with the being yeeted off into the distance at the end of the duel, that was the end of the level. I think maybe there was also the adding a bunch of those like red pad black orb combos at the end and then it ended or something like that. But this duel, no, not duel, this cube maze was added just because I felt like it and because I wanted the end of the screen to, uh, the end screen to happen at the second drop. It also isn't even a cube maze. There's only one spot to go. It's really easy to find out because it's the only one where there are dynamic objects and the other blocks don't have solid hitboxes. So even if you went the wrong way, you wouldn't go the wrong way.
So yeah, uh, that is the finale of Palace. We have my little glowy logo, Pink's little glowy logo, and the Wavix face from the Wavix house, which was added in the V5 update because I didn't think it was Wavix related enough. I know that definitely 100% someone will make a level harder than this for the will. It might already be in production, I'm just unaware of it. It might be coming out today as I release this or record this or something. But all that I know is that I want the person who makes the level that tops Palace to have absolutely no idea what they're doing. I want them to make a level as scuffed as Palace was, because you can see even all the way back here, like, th this is just a wave part. There are no, like, additional spikes in there. Like, this part right here, there's a bunch of invisible buffs just because I felt like it. Like, this was a very scuffed level when it came right down to it. This is a cube maze that isn't even a cube maze. And I feel that that sort of, like, amateurness is lost in a lot of my more recent layouts and also levels, I guess but also for people who've been doing this for a long time. As this was my first Big Impossible level, I did have help from Pink as shown as the young, uh, as shown on the young screen, but overall, I did not know what I was doing, and I want the person who tops this to also have no idea what they're doing, because that's so much more fun. If, hypothetically, GQC was to submit a huge shifted Lunar Empress, not saying that would happen, but it, it did happen, and it was very weird, but that, it, it's no fun to see a level like, perfectly crafted to beat Palace. There have been quite a few levels that were placed at number two. I think I can name them all off the top of my head. There's, uh, Pleb Zone, and then, was that Wavix Empress? And then Minus Detroit Vix, and then Antivirus, and then, uh, Wavix Joy. I think that's all of them. If I forgot one, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I, I would consider Antivirus to be harder than Wavex Joy, so I'm gonna consider... Actually, no, I'm just gonna use a slash, so Wavex Joy slash Antivirus. When Wavex Empress, the good one, not the GQC one, was added to the list, I thought people were really close to topping Palace. And now, uh, Antivirus slash Wavex Joy feels the same closeness that, like, I felt when Wavex Empress was, uh, number two. So, I'm hoping that this time it's for real. Also, I'm aware that Wavix Suffer exists. Wavix Suffer is half decorated. It, it does not count. Even though it was submitted, even though it was half decorated, which was weird. Also, there is like the other Mianzin collab, but seeing as Mianzin has sort of died, uh, that, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Unless somebody else revives it, which uh, might happen. But anyways, that's all that I wanted to say for now. Uh, bye. Until, like, tomorrow, I guess, when, uh, the next episode of the, uh, Christmas series comes out, which might be a, uh, tax wave.